Stanley Kubrick made Full Metal Jacket. But if he had the guts to tell the true story of America's militia and the aviation industry, he would have made this movie. We saw a view from the top. So you know what that means. Now it's time for How did this get made? Gonna have a good time Celebrate some failure Not just be a hater Can't you know you wonder How did this get made? Let's wallow in the mediocrity Of subpar art Perhaps we'll find the answer To the question How did this get made? Hello, people of Earth, and welcome to How Did This Get Made? I am Paul Shear, uh, and today we are talking about the 2003 Gwyneth Paltrow film, A View from the Top, a movie that she has said is terrible. Um, and <laughs> what do you need to know about this film? Well, uh, it's got a bunch of celebrities in it, from Mark Ruffalo, Christina Applegate, Candace Bergen, Rob Below, the list goes on and on, Mike Myers, and it is about a small town girl who grew up in a trailer park outside of Nevada who decides to chase her dreams into the sky and become a stewardess. Uh, that's about it. She falls in love along the way, but we'll get into it all as soon as I introduce my two co-hosts. Please welcome Jason Manzoukas and June Diane Rayfield. How are you both? Ooh. <laughs> and when you started quoting Stanley Kubrick, I, for a second, I was like, oh, no, are we on unspooled? <laughs> are we about to are we about to participate in unspooled? Uh, and for a uh, for a real moment, the way you were setting it up about the militia and stuff, yeah. I was like, oh, no, I watched the wrong movie. I for <laughs> sure start. I must have started the wrong movie. This movie is really interesting to me because. The amount of celebrities in it, like this is a heyday movie, 2003. Now, I know uh, a big thing about this film, the reason why they say it failed at the box office was because um, it was supposed to come out uh, around 9-11. And uh, that, oh, yes. Really? And so uh, they pushed it. They took out a scene of Mike Myers teaching them how to deal with terrorists. Oh, and uh, And they delayed it about two years. So this movie is... Two years. Yeah. yeah, I mean that is get rid of it. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I'm assuming they can't, but like you've been given an opportunity. Get rid of. You can't be like we got people got to see this movie. This movie uh, is. Yeah, bonkers. I'm gonna say yeah. something. I disagree. <laughs> I enjoyed this movie. Whoa! I. I actually thought I had seen it before because I re in in my mind I have this image of um, Gwyneth Paltrow in that flight attendant's outfit yes. with the hair pulled back and that lip and so I I have like seen this before because that image is so clear to me but I have never seen the actual movie and where it came from. Uh, you're gonna give me a plane movie. <laughs> you're gonna give me. Female flight attendants. Yeah, you're gonna give me Candace Bergen as as like a as the the ultimate female flight attendant. I, I was riveted. This is Mark so Ruffalo, interesting I because I, because I have so many June. I love this take. I have so many of the exact points you're making in my notes, but but I keep saying why isn't this interesting? You're gonna give me a movie that has. All of the components that you just ran down, and instead of it being it drawing me in and telling a story that I found compelling, at the end of the day, I kept wondering, what is this movie about? What does Gwyneth Paltrow's character want? Like, what it reminded me of watching, it had, gave me the same unease as watching, what was the movie we did with Jude Law and was it Gretchen Maul? Where he falls in love with her as a baby. Oh, God. And then, the, then he comes back. And this is so much better than that, Jason. They, it felt that the, the two of this them. This is Gwyneth Paltrow and Christina Applegate on screen together oh, for Candace a lot Bergen. of the movie. And they have a fight scene in which Great. Gwyneth Paltrow's Loved it. face is like thrown, like pushed into a loaf of bread. Like I, I <laughs> no. was it screaming was, with bad. delight. Okay, I, it's bad. It this is, movie is, John Polito's in this movie. George Kennedy's in this movie. I don't understand. We haven't even mentioned Mike Myers. What? I don't understand what and his is eye. happening. The only thing wrong with this movie is Mike Myers. Okay. Well, otherwise, <laughs> okay. it's perfect. Okay. Hold on. I want to say a couple things here. First of all, 
I also share an opinion with Jason that the sum total of its parts don't make sense. And I would say that it kind of is perfectly encapsulated in a moment where Mark Ruffalo, who's great in this movie, and in a different movie. Everyone seems to be in a different movie. That may be the issue. The tone is all over the place because there's a part in the movie where Mark uh, orders a small... Mark. Are you Mark. guys like best friends? I'm you just going to say Mark. Uh, you you know, Mark. I've worked with him Mark. and I don't know that. Are you so and Mark and Ruff? Should I say his whole podcast. name? The Rough Man? You have to. The Rough, <laughs> <laughs> the rough Dog? So Rough Dog says, I'll have a small cheese pizza with everything on it. And that uh-huh. to me is something that underscores what's wrong with the movie. Because a small cheese pizza with everything on it is no longer... Uh, a small cheese pizza. It's a pizza with everything on it. You say I'll have a small pizza with everything on it. And I feel like <laughs> oh, what oh, wow. are you saying? Whoa, okay. right now. now this, now this is that? something I, this is something what? I'd like to explore. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm saying that the oh, awkwardness wait, of that order, the awkwardness of that order is is the underlying reason why this movie doesn't work because it doesn't Paul, feel like please, it's from this planet. Please don't be on my side. Okay. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> you disown him. Uh, I don't know that I, I want him either you. after that. I was with I, you until you, this was the linchpin. This is your linchpin of your theory as because to why the movie doesn't work. It, it is simply, cheese it's pizza just with sli- everything on it. it's slightly <laughs> off. It's slightly off, right? You would never you say. You think he should have said, I would like a small everything pizza? Yeah. Like okay. that's what I'm saying. It's, like it's just bagel. It's I don't just, think you say that. It's just a. You never say I'd have a a cheese pizza. Yeah, you, you're right in the sense that you don't order the base level cheese pizza and right. then start adding toppings. Right. You order. I have a pizza. Like, you don't with, say I'll have a cheese pizza with pepperoni. You right. you say a let's pizza. have a, let's get a pepperoni. And what I'm saying wow. is that when you say it like that, that's what this movie feels like. It just doesn't know exactly what it is I in don't a feel way. Like, yes, I agree with you. What you're saying is right i I agree you're back in you're back in okay (laughs) because what you're what you're speaking to is true which is none of the people feel like they know each other at all it's like they have any like intimate relationship even like ruffalo and his whole like family when they go to christmas at his family's house or uh, uh, right. I thought for a second that scene was going to turn into like a murder mystery. Well, that's nope. the thing. The tone like, great. Gonna Give me anything with else. stakes. I, I would I, love it. I mean, Kill the grandma. When when Mark Ruffalo shows up, when Rough Dog shows up, the movie changes into this. I actually like their connection. I like this romance. It's I like, oh, but before it, I'm like, is this Dumb and Dumber? I don't know because it, I thought it was giving Romeo and Michelle. I, I thought, thought it so was too. Giving, yeah. 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 I thought so too. But was... without being fun, right? Like to me, the to me the thing was if it had been a. Uh, uh, a flight attendant movie that has like a kind of almost like a sports movie because they have like training montages. They have if it had had like the the structure of a sports movie where they have to go through the training and be the best to get a placement and their buddies and 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 Candace Bergen is the you know the the idol everybody that they're looking to. Um, I would have loved it, but then it wants to be a rom com and it wants to also just be about seemingly Gwyneth Paltrow alone. Well, okay. Well, you're totally right. Like, I'm not going to sit here today, not on this day, and debate you there. Like, yeah, it's a mess, you know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, how about this? It's a mess. Here, but you but still had fun, which I get. I really enjoyed it. it goes I down really love watching Gwyneth Paltrow. I oh, enjoyed she's... looking at her. I loved well, but, but that, that was part of my problem, which was it is like so immediate from the jump. That she is like so next level beautiful that I couldn't understand why she what what was holding what was holding her character what did she want and what was holding well, her back I mean I guess it, but, she wanted to go to Paris for the class <laughs> oh babe but, you know I mean here's what I'll say when it starts off too you cut to this little girl in a trailer park and at like she seems five or six in that opening and she goes. I always wanted to leave here. Can you imagine a five-year-old being like, I need to get out of my home? Like that I seems love like, that though. I do. I'm like I on board for that, that a as, a dri- as a drive, as a, yeah. cause her, her childhood was miserable. I, and okay. I liked a lot of the, and I think 
I, but it's, their childhood it's, I think we're bad. only off by a matter of degrees. Yes. You know what I mean? I think I would feel very oh. similar to you, June. Very similar. Because, And I think part of my frustration with the movie was, was that it was putting forth so many good uh, potential elements. movies. Yeah, so yeah. many good potential elements. I mean, the ensemble, as we've said, is like stacked. We haven't even talked about like Josh Molina's in this. How about you know, like Mark the, Blucas? God, Josh Molina. Mark Blucas, Josh Molina, uh, Will Bailey from the West Wing. We see you in here. Um, we it's, get the Stacy Dash. Oh, yes, great. Thank you. Unused, but he's like it, that. It had, like Stacy Dash brought me that. Like, oh, is this bring it on? It just didn't have. A tone because when Mike Myers comes on and Mike Myers, we should do an entire last looks episode with all three of us. That's just about the blooper reel. Oh, oh, my God. (laughs) I I mean, well, here's what I'll say. What is so odd about her? They had a great time. They did have. I mean, they look, they did a dance number, which you always know. You know, it's a good movie. Why wasn't that dance number in the movie? Because I feel like that was for the credits. Well, I think they needed both the bloopers and the dance number to make it long enough to qualify as a movie. I'll tell you this much. Just we were asking about why is this cast so good? I know for okay. a fact this movie is a Miramax movie. So I know for a fact. I know. And I thought of a lot about that while well, watching. Okay, isn't so, it, it like the minute that that credit came up at the top, oh, I was like, she was on my spine and knowing Ugh. Gwyneth was in this. I was like, did he fucking make her do this? Well, like my my okay, answer to what? that is this. I have done a Miramax movie and I knew that there's a there's one or two very big guest stars in the movie that I did. And the reason that I heard was uh, guest stars. Like uh like, like, like cameos. cameos. Oh, and okay. um and the thing that I heard was Miramax did this kind of like grab of people and they forced them into these movies because it was like, oh, we had you for this movie, but you didn't ever make it. So now I'm gonna pull you in here. So this movie feels to me like we're mm. we're calling in every one I of agree. our favors. It's like boom, you're this, in, you're this in, you're in. This movie felt like a Harvey special. Like I'm gonna make everybody yeah, like, do this. Yes, yes. And I okay. don't know, wh- but I can't. What I can't figure out is why. Why? Like why did this <laughs> seem like a good a, a good so, bet? I will say something. Like I also, you know, I do think that there's something, and of course, yeah, there's a better movie in here, and. You know, I was thinking while watching it, like there is a narrative in here about women, especially at a certain time, having really only two professions that were available, you know, to become a flight attendant was like total access and freedom for a lot of women. And, um, you know, there is a there is a powerful story in here lost somewhere in the deep recesses of this movie. <laughs> do you think it was um, a drama that they tried to make? Like, do you think it, that, that's like, it's? I think, yeah, uh, making it a light comedy seems weird. Like, it seems like Romeo and Mich- It was broad as hell. At yeah. certain points. <laughs> but at certain points, it's like super grounded. Right. It's super grounded at certain points. It's like there are moments in here where I'm like... <laughs> They are playing this scene, and maybe this is Gwyneth Paltrow, because I actually, I like Gwyneth Paltrow. I'm on board. I think that she can do comedy. I feel like I would have liked to have seen the Romeo and Michelle version of this. Yes. Um, But there are moments where they play, like, her stealing the soap. When Christina Applegate steals the soap, like, that's played too real in a way like when i think about scenes in dumb and dumber there's something it's like well this is comedic but maybe it's the actresses are are bringing like too much depth to this well it's unclear this feels also to me like what and what did you say 2002 what did, oh uh, no two, it's, well, it's, it was gonna come it's out in pre 9 11 so right, it's probably so, a 2001 shot movie so you think about it like this you think about uh romy michelle come out in 97 right so you feel like okay yeah. let's get this going and it feels like it's in the zeitgeist to be like we'll make a, we'll make something like that but this feels a little bit more like um more like the indie mo- indie light miramax it's frankly it feels like a miramax comedy from that time that weren't very funny necessarily like yeah it feels like an indie comedy that has like a lot of frankly just dramatic actors and then here we have just mike myers as but what if mike myers was doing all this nonsense and there's a version of this movie where i'm like oh this could have been an snl movie 
Mm-hmm. Right. And it would have been, or like uh, tonally more similar to Romeo and Michelle, but is what we're talking about. But like an SNL movie where yeah, it's like 100%. actually like they had broader the characters stayed. who are leaning into the broad, oh yeah. yeah, leaning into the broad elements of it rather than, I felt like they kept trying to ground it and then do big broad bits. And I couldn't tell, I guess what the tone was. I felt like this was sort of a response to the success of Legally Blonde. Oh. Of like, oh, interesting. You know, of yeah. this character who is open hearted and wants, um, you know, this thing, but is a good person and is super type A and really, you know, studious and earnest and smart. Well, and, but but the difference is like Legally Blonde, the tone is so clear. Yeah. And and the, her drive is as well. Like absolutely. her goals, her her and each threshold is understood and met. It's like structurally yes. helping. I mean, this is the thing. She, her first fight, she's never been in a fight. The way that she freaks out on that flight, that is pure Dumb and dumber. Like, and that's I mean, not real It's, it's, it's guys, funny. I laughed really that's a, that's hard. That's a great that's, beat. That's like, I don't want to forget these beats. These beats are funny. I, I wrote into that some... loaf of bread. Like, I laughed so hard when she was screaming, we're going to crash. And just th- even the shot of her, just simply the composition yeah. of that shot where she's holding on to the chairs, screaming for her life. I thought it was quite funny. <laughs> no, and I agree. I think that was very funny. And I think like, but then the button to that broad comedy bit is Rob Lowe coming back to give like a heartfelt, hey, kid, yes. you okay speech. How you doing? I was terrible. I couldn't walk. I spilled the coffee. Hey. I totally freaked out the passengers. It wasn't exactly a frozen lake up there. Turbulence is tough. You'll get the hang of it. Am I going to get fired? I'm going to get fired. (laughs) Nobody's getting fired. Really. You're going to be a pro. You're going places. You think? I'm a pilot. It's my job to know where people are going. And I was like, oh, wait, is this the movie? Or is that other scene the movie? And I think it wants to have it both ways. But the reality is, like, you can't, I don't think you can have Rob Lowe in that single scene and then never return again. Well, it, it was wild. I, I was like, I, I don't understand. I thought they were going to be. He go? You're going to set something. No, you can't have Rob Do Lowe you play think, a Jason and Paul that he crashed. Oh, yeah. he died. Wow. Another flight. I mean, he doesn't have a great record. <laughs> I think he was kidding with that, but I would believe it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's what I because that's the thing is like they set up this airline in Act One that she works for, like the down and dirty, grungy one. Yeah, you know, like the airline runs out of a trailer. It's disgusting. Like that, I was like, okay, this is a funny, broad comedy. I like that, but then she shows then up to. Th- yeah, she gets out of that world almost <laughs> immediately. <laughs> And then I, there's so many things about this movie that I now here's what I'll say. Uh, I believe the person playing the tone perfectly, Candace Bergen. Like Candace oh, yeah. Bergen is like and Kelly Kelly Preston, always is. Kelly yes, Preston uh, both, knows the assignment. And Christina Applegate. Oh, yeah. oh yes, obviously. I, Christina I, no, Applegate. No, no. Here's what I think is like I feel like they I think that Gwyneth Paltrow and Christina Applegate are very funny and good and killing it. But I feel like tonally, it's all over the place. And I feel like they're in one movie. Candace Bergen is in one movie. Mike Myers is in a movie that's even more heightened than the, the Dumb movie, and Dumber the, movie. I, I think it, what's really, I think, very difficult and it's hard to watch. And it, I think is what's creating a bit of the dissonance in watching it for me was that I think Gwyneth Paltrow is a fantastic actor and is oh. electric to watch. Always has been. I'm always a fan. But in this movie... She is able to do the broad physical comedic stuff with Christina Applegate when called upon. And that's a movie I would watch like a Romeo and Michelle's. But then the movie also seems to want us to have a an investment in her relationship with the absolutely dead normal Mark Ruffalo. He right. is he is a normal guy in a normal rom-com. Not Mark Ruffalo is not playing broad. the 2000 like Miramax Romance, yeah, rom-com. Like, like he, he's playing that, and I guess maybe that's a role that women have often been assigned in a comedy. But he's not even laughing at her. He just has a dream, and like what we understand his dream to be is he was going to be a top lawyer 
at a, one of the biggest firms and he's like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to like waste my life. I want to go eat great food. I want to travel the world. But like, I've been in Lake Havasu. There's no good food to be had there. There's no real traveling the world. It's the most landlocked place you could possibly it's, get. It's where you go when actually like all your dreams have Wow. Have died. I will tell you this, and I, I, I may, I, I, may, I, I may, am I wrong? Paul? No, all I will those say dreams this. are at the bottom of the lake. I will say this, uh, and I may, I may have said this on this podcast before. When June came to visit me in Lake Havasu, she said to me, point blank, uh, "You're hanging out with trash. You're becoming trash." <laughs> <laughs> it is that is because when I went to Lake Havasu, Paul had been there for about five weeks and he we went out to dinner and he immediately ordered as though I would like as though it was the most normal thing in the world, a blue lagoon, like a giant blue frozen drink. Was I and was I, was I like, eating at Chili's six fuck? to seven days a week? Oh. Yeah. I was eating a chili six to seven. It is very distressing. Ugh. And I saw you ordered that drink. Like, what? Yeah, what? We get blue. It's a cocktail. What? And I was like, that's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Like, it was and June, very... I, I want to, I just want to clarify something that you said here. It wasn't frozen. It was just a giant goblet of blue liquid. It <laughs> was not, worse. it didn't even, even have worse. the, it didn't even have <laughs> the, uh, right. it wasn't frozen. It didn't even it have the respect frozen. of being frozen. It was and like, I just remember <laughs> looking around that restaurant and being like, every single person here is on meth. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> including uh, Paul. <laughs> You, know. oh, you came to visit so, Paul on set and all of his teeth had fallen out. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Listen, I I definitely didn't understand Mark Ruffalo's journey because he, yeah, I because don't know what he's he in was a doing. different movie that we well, frankly don't care about. But what was his job on the lake? Okay, the I, can, I, I think I can I can break down a little bit of you this for us. Okay. So he is he was in law school. And he was like one semester away from graduating law school and he dropped out and ended up on this uh, as a uh, law enforcement officer, like whatever water. What, I can't remember what his a title is. Enfo- yeah. Enforcement a lake enf- yeah. enforcement officer, you know, that is some whatever. So then blah, blah, blah. And then mm-hmm. later when we meet up with him, he's re-enrolled in law school and then becomes a lawyer. So by the end of the movie, he's a lawyer in Cleveland and that is his life. What type of law does he practice? You know, he gets hired at that firm that she sees announced in the newspaper. Yes. It looked like a, it looked like like a, a national a paper, of, too. Do a lot of newspapers <laughs> like look, it, it had to be a national paper. I don't she's in. She's not in Cleveland. I don't yeah. think. No, she's so reading. His hiring is a, at a Cleveland law firm is announced in like the Wall Street Journal. Here's what I found fascinating about the movie is they present a world in which international first class flight attendants and i know there's there's a big difference between serving like you know us in economy and serving people in first class but at the same time i'm like a job is a job is a job and also is the pay difference that much where these women who are working international first class flights can buy chanel and louis vuitton and all of these luxury items like how much are they this making? This is the crazy part of this. You're not, you don't become as wealthy as the class that you're serving. Like, that's what this movie is positing. Well, that's is like, what I did. Yeah. And, and then, and that's what was confusing to me is like, it, even if you're serving a bologna sandwich or you're serving, you know, uh, uh, you know, filet mignon, like you're still serving food. You're not, you don't get to eat that well, food. I is, think, is, I guess what the, I'm the, saying. Okay. I believe the, the I believe the movie is is suggesting the, a, a bit of magical thinking in a way, which is once she gets her internet, once she gets her like her destiny, because the movie keeps coming back to it's your destiny, it's your destiny, and I kept being like. Is there a, like a some sort of magical element to this movie? I don't quite get it. It's your destiny. You have to international to Paris to blah blah blah. It almost then seems to suggest like she is granted access to absolute luxury. Her clothes change. She has a beautiful New York oh, look, City look, apartment. Look at Candace Bergen's uh, uh, closet. closet. Yeah, everything seems to be like um, she no longer seems to be in a job that is frankly a grind. Well, like I, I, she still has to deal with I, the fucking maniacs on an airplane. 
mean, <laughs> well, listen, and I think they've gotten so, you know, we've gotten so much worse there. I do think that plane travel used to be a bit more civilized. But that's why I feel like it, but this movie you, isn't a period saying, film. That's, that's what that's, I was just going to say. You said this earlier, June, because it seems yeah. as though this movie could have been made in the 60s or 70s, and I would understand a little bit more yes, what it was about. it would make more sense. Yeah, like that TV show Pan Am. Exactly. Thank you. Perfect. Yep. But yeah, here's the but thing. No, this is a this, this is a movie was. that takes place here in the 2000s. It's not... Cra- yeah, like, early out. This, early is a, this is a movie that, that where Hooters is, is referenced. Gwyneth Paltrow is living <laughs> on Fifth Avenue. Uh, yeah. Living on Fifth Avenue in a very, again, a very oddly decorated... Uh, oh my apartment. God. Uh, the but way that she painted like blood red, blood red, and the bed is like in the center of the room, which I would imagine is awkward when you have guests over. Just to be like, the bed is where the couch <laughs> might be. It's it seems a little odd. Um, but her whole, but then also, you know, she's having all this success, all this time, but she's not happy, right? That's mm-hmm. what we know. That's what we're following, and we don't know, you know. I mean, we didn't even talk about the twist. The big giant twist of this whole movie is we said Gwyneth Paltrow going through this rigorous training. This is what I was going back to, this Kubrick level style training. And I just felt like when when she was put there, I really, I mean, did you guys fall for it? Did you think that Mike Myers had it out for her? Mike Myers and his lazy eye. And we have to get, we didn't even talk about Mike Myers yet because Mike Myers is, and I know Oof. we keep on saying is on a different plane, but Mike, he's, I mean. He's, he's on a literal different plane. He is on a, I mean, Mike Myers, <laughs> I feel like, they let him run ragged. Oh, and it's like, and it's clear in the bloopers that they're just being like they're letting him do whatever. He's got a cross eye for the entire film, uh, which I uh, pained me to watch because I knew that he was holding it in, you know, or making oh, it. I set? thought it might be a contact. I think it was set. Oh, yeah. okay, all right. I don't even know how you would do. Well, I'm I feel like Mike Myers that. might have that <laughs> skill set. You know, I might he might have that cross. Maybe, but that's uh, quite a cross. I could it's believe that he spent like three years from the ages of nine to yes. twelve just that's, learning how that, to do that. that. Like that to me is like, oh, it, it, he made my dad laugh. You know, and then uh, that was his whole thing. You know, and and when he gets into the screen and he starts, he is not only he is not only the face of Royalty Airlines. He is the trainer of Royalty Airlines. He's the interviewer of Royalty Airlines. Like at every step of the way, he he's is like in, the the door, the woman who was uh, the Vol, Volvania uh, the, yes. in that movie, who was open, who was the bouncer, who was the, the you give her the password. She was then the bartender at the sex club in that movie. Um, yeah, so he's doing everything. There's no other employee that we see from Royal Airlines or Royalty Airlines besides Mike Myers. He is bringing these people in. They're in a classroom setting. They're on a plane setting. And You're right, though. There's no other people in the world and their yeah. entire graduating class of flight attendants f- to to work again it's like a school movie for this portion of it if there's only like 15 of them like mustn't there be necessary like hundreds and hundreds of new employees to train and get ready for what is i'm wonder, though, in 2002 it sounds like such a sweet gig that do people ever retire yeah yeah well, I, got it. well, I mean yeah. clearly candace bergen and but but by the way he's just as successful as candace bergen because he also wrote a book he has an audio book and an actual book candace bergen has a book that whole idea that like candace bergen is the world's most famous flight attendant <laughs> that does make me laugh too it's like i don't even understand how you would get Again, that that to me feels like (laughs) that to me feels like Paul, I feel like if you get to the note section and you're like, this is based on a book written in 1967 that they modernized into the like, I would believe that there was a woman who is the most famous flight attendant who would be like on the Merv Griffin show or the Tonight Show as a guest or something like that. But now I just don't think that's true, you know, and I also think right now. And correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm certain we have flight attendants in the in the audience. Isn't it a job that is like rife with problematic uh, situations throughout the lifespan of this this job with weren't women subjected to weight requirements and all sorts of like well, they have horrible their hair stuff up. inside of this industry? Their hair has to be up. I mean, by the way, she shows up. Not anymore, but at one no, point. no, I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying in the past, you, you, in the world of the, yes, she puts in her the hair world up. of the movie. 
In the world of the movie, she puts her hair up for the interview to then go to the bathroom to have her hair down, to get on the plane to have her hair up. Then when she freaks out on the plane, it goes back. That hair is going up and down like an elevator. Like I, I feel like it's <laughs> like I don't even understand. Like I feel like there was a lot of reshoots here too. One thing, uh, Molly uh, found a piece of information that Mike Myers has uh, two hair people for this movie and Gwyneth Paltrow, one. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> it, now was the was his story that he could he so he couldn't be a flight yes, attendant because he had the because of his it, eye or he couldn't be a pilot no well, this is his, his, this other thing about like his why couldn't he be a flight attendant because of his lazy eye i guess because he couldn't see things because sometimes you have to put every document right up to his eye to see it uh which now did i laugh when he said you know you're landing on runway six and then this corrected himself and said, nine, nine. Wait, was that in the it movie did. or is that just that's the in, bloopers? That's in the blooper reel. Because, the bloopers, but I because did laugh. Your big I laugh, laugh that you just quoted is from the bloopers. Right. In, in, <laughs> Didn't and by make the way, it to the movie. And by the way, that sequence, which he is in a, it, it's like a, this movie like has. air traffic control. Yes. Which is the shittiest set of all time. Like this is a, uh, this it's is like a. It's like airplane. It looks like airplane. It movie. looks like, it looks like a student production of airplane. Like, <laughs> hey, well, like we'll make our version of that. And, and it's so bad. And then what he does, and the reason why it's not in the movie, obviously, is because he crashes a plane and then he calms down by ringing the bell. I just want to go. Back to Mark Blucas, who, because this movie I don't think understands jobs, because Gwyneth Paltrow gets a job at Big Lots, and she is a bespoke uh, luggage salesperson. Like she, like I've, I I've think been she's to a, just in the luggage department. She's in the. Luggage I mean, but department. are do, are the you same assigned? Way that Mark Mark Blucas leaves her for someone from it, the barbecue, barbecue department. But this is what I'm saying. Like <laughs> I've been to Target. I've been to Big Lots. I don't think that they have people that are just working. Like the luck, like the luggage, <laughs> like you don't go to get like, oh, I need to go to the, I need to talk to a luggage expert at Big Lots. At Big Lots, it's like that bag is about the size that I yeah. need it to be. That's it. Like the, she's showing off this bag is like she's doing a Vitamix demonstration at Costco. Like, no, I, I agree. Mean, that, and that's like, OK, so that's another perfect element of the weird dissonance of this movie, which is it purports to be showing you like regular people's ordinary lives. Yes. And they're not right. At, it's like a movie that's about the working class that's just written by rich people being like, I think this is what they do. I don't know. Maybe she's the luggage salesperson at the Big Lot store. That's her job. And then and Mark, like, wait, what? And then Mark Blucas is like, I got a promotion and I'm moving into a different Big Lots and I can't take you with me to the next Big Lots. Like as if... He owns Big Lots. It's like, no, you're just. I think he just wanted to break up. With yeah, him. that was he was just oh. trying to dump her. Oh, man. I don't even understand why he was trying to dump her. I don't get it. I also don't get I don't understand why he's trying to dump her. I'm like, she's literally the, the most beautiful woman it, you'll ever see in your, your entire stop. life. And she couldn't be left with her. The movie, you know. the movie, Gwyneth Paltrow is <laughs> stunningly gorgeous from beginning to end. She, she has no glow up whatsoever in her journey. No. She's just absolutely like a smoke show throughout. <laughs> I don't think that was anyone's fault though. You know, you no, can't no, put her tough. on screen. I think it's and tough. Yeah, it's just like, I think I think they made some attempt, but it, yeah, it just doesn't work. I thought this was interesting too, which we haven't even talked about, is like the fact that Christmas stakes are sort of inserted into the movie so haphazardly. Like at one point I'm like, is this a Christmas film? Because then at the third act of the movie, she's racing to Mark Ruffalo to get to him, I think on Christmas Eve. Well, I think it's the day okay. after Christmas. And, or, and, or the day and they're after taking Christmas. down Why the ornaments. Why wasn't she wearing that red they're, sweater? They're though? taking down the ornaments the day after. This family doesn't fuck around. They're wearing red sweaters on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> the day after, it's like it's done. We're gone. Dude, we're we're done. Out. Everyone's day out of the is house. Way too quick. Well, I think that's insane. I think it's nuts. Um, I think that the, 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 it seems like absolutely seems nuts like Mark. To do day it after. seems like Mark Ruffalo and her left the night of Christmas. Be like, we got to get out of here. That was we, it. We did we're it. Out, we're we out, took we're the out. family go, go, picture. Go. We're gone. Also, why didn't she put the red sweater they gave her to if, to be wearing the red why sweater in the, the picture? picture? Jason, they just I'll gave it to you. Never know. Put it but on. I think put it on for that picture. And that family was nice to her, right? Part of her. Incredible. I think the family was lovely. I think a part of her thought. The, I no, can't. I'm not I can't. Ready for yeah, this red sweater. That's what yet. I think too. But it made. No what would have been? It would have made a beautiful. It, it would have made a beautiful <laughs> twist if she wore the sweater after. 
Like if she, would, came, if she showed well, up, if she showed up in I the sweater, she was going to show up but in the if, red sweater, but she if did this not. person who dumped me and then doesn't call, but shows up at Christmas <laughs> wearing the sweater. I would be like, you psycho get out of here. Like, that's what I wrote. I was like, she flies this 12 hour flight to blah, 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 all this hubbub to get back to him. It's 2003. She can call him. She can call him and say, hey. Can I talk to you? Can we have an adult conversation? But the movie wants to be romance, but it's not. And it's not also because like we've we haven't felt a connection really to Christmas. Like no. if, if it was like every Christmas is my whole thing of I just hate being alone on Christmas. I want to find some that's never for, ever, when, for example, never. when she goes but, to her friends for Christmas, her friend invites her in New York to Brooklyn to Christmas. Right. And it's like, whose, whose house is this? Who are all these people? From? Make them take a family picture that she sees. And it reminds her of the family she could have been a part of. And that put her that in the sent, red sweater. There. Yes, give give something. In the red well then, know, well so so she finally does catch up with him. Wait, can you just talk about when tells... she first comes into the house? I don't know. Okay, so oh, with she, the grandmother? She first yes. She first knocks oh, on the, the door grand... and it's not even his house, it's the family house. She opens the door, walks in bold, uh, you know, bold move, and then has this monologue. Again, this, remember the Jude Law Gretchen Mall movie? It's kind of the same. Almost the same house. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. And has this monologue about the mistakes that she made. And to this woman who is completely ignoring her. And I'm like, okay, here's the funny thing. She's going to turn around and you know, say, oh, I, I, I have my, I didn't put my hearing aid in. I didn't do anything. There's a joke here. There's a, this is a funny setup because she's having this no, heartfelt sorry. monologue and no, it, no. I don't even the know. The old like, woman it, keeps looking at her, but then just going back to her chore of taking slowly all of the elements, uh, all of the ornaments rather <laughs> off yeah, of the Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it, the, yeah, you're no, right. Nothing. I thought it was going to be that as well. Because that's what the the vi- the visual language of the movie is telling us. There's a joke here, yes. but there isn't. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there isn't. Well, when she finally gets to Mark, she does tell him that, you know, she thought she wanted this. She really wanted him. She understands that now. And then they get back together. Now. We also haven't even talked about when he said that he had a school partner, which is a phrase I've never oh, yeah. heard before. But again, but, but, cheese pizza with everything on it. School okay, partner. School partner their is first, just a brand did you guys new idea. Notice that they're not study partner. Yeah, school, school partner. partner. Who said for that? For a lawyer. And you for know, a lawyer. Mark, you know, Mark school Ruffalo partner. was like, "It's weird. Nobody calls this a school partner, but we need the part. We need partner. So I can I just let's say my project partner? We're working on a pro. You know, like my school. Anyway, Long story short, she makes this. You know, they get back together. And she says, so easily. Like, "You're my essentially like you're my destiny, yeah. right? And this is my destiny." Mm-hmm. Cut. To. He's like, I don't want you. He's like, I don't okay. want you. He's like, I don't want you to not do the thing Keep that you want to do. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to ground cut, you, basically, here yes, in Cleveland. Overlap with a voiceover before we see her. Sally had said that life is a series of arrivals and departures. But I learned there is more than one way to spread your wings. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cleveland's Hopkins International Airport. Please keep your seatbelts fastened until we reach the gate. We know you have a choice when you travel, and we thank you for choosing Royalty Express. If this is just a stopover for you, we do wish you a safe and pleasant continuation of your journey. And if Cleveland is your final destination, welcome home. This is interesting because I didn't, it didn't sound like her voice. Oh. Well, you're about to realize why. <laughs> but I genuinely was like, is I just was very confused about whose voice it is. And 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 the voice is saying something along the lines of like, we know you have several options when it comes to travel, but we're going to get you there safely. Blah, blah, blah. Um, please listen to your whatever it says, some sort of flight announcement. And then we slow the camera slowly finds its way into the cockpit. It's tr- the, the camera co-pilot. has been tracking through the airplane on one of yes, her flights. Thank you, Jason. Yes. And we're seeing other a flight attendant looks a lot like her who's sitting down, you know, getting into her jump seat. And then we see the co-pilot as we head into the to the uh, little crew area, the the cabin, the pilot's cabin. Then we see 
the head pilot turned around <laughs> and did Gwyneth Paltrow. Now, was she giving that monologue to the airplane? Yes. Yes. I don't get what this movie's about. That felt like, that really felt like a reshoot. That and felt like, I don't know, the end's not working. What if she becomes a pilot? Like, the training to become a pilot seems really intense. Like, yeah. Like, she should be much older. So. And it seems as though she's a pilot, like, six months later. Yes. <laughs> like, she would have had, she would, in order to become, like, a like commercial airline pilot, she would have had to go through like, I don't know, six years. I don't know. Uh, like, uh, I know they make it seem like it's like of at a talent agency. Like yeah. you work in the mailroom and then you go as to if, a system well, and then you, you go did. to, it's like, no, it's a completely you different. Did you did like, first class international. You military. Could, no, you did first class international. We'll get you behind it. We'll get, we'll get you as co-pilot <laughs> first for a couple of weeks and then we'll sw- switch over to pilot. And she's not even looking but out the why window. Why did she it want does, to do this? Yeah. What does this change for her? And her relationship with Mark. Okay. It. Why? Why is her want different now? Okay. Like, by the way, to learn to be a pilot, the same trips. to learn to be a pilot, it takes six to twelve months, with a minimum of forty oh, log flying hours. Oh, and, that's not uh, right. You must get certified so as a private pilot. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Then, Wait, that's that's not to be a commercial airline pilot. That might be for like a Cessna. It says FAA requires 1,500 hours to fly as an airline okay, pilot. Okay, so that's, can be that makes more sense. Years. That's what I felt like was true. Yes. yes. 1,500 hours. So she'd have to be clocking that. That's two years. She's got to f- clock that by herself. Yeah. No, that seems this. I mean, well, I mean, that But again, this movie or really. the military. If, if the movie was more fun and fantastical, I genuinely wouldn't care. I wouldn't be poking at these. But the movie also wants to exist in the logical world where she wants to settle down in Cleveland with it's a love story at the end. It's not this fun in the sky kind of broad comedy at the end, except that at the very end, she has the glasses down like this and gives us a wink to the camera. She gives a wink to the camera. At the end of the movie, like, can you believe this? <laughs> can you believe this? Well, we don't know what we're supposed to believe. Like, it seems like this. I'm not I don't know what has changed for her. Uh, uh, correct. Nothing. Correct. Because <laughs> here's know. the thing. Here's the, at the end of the movie. She's now she's now decided I'm going to be in love. She's decided. And so the cut to the future isn't now they have a beautiful, loving family, but she still gets to do what she loves. The The, the cut to the future is. Guess what? Now she's a pilot. Well, but (laughs) but to to June's point, so to June's point, this goes back to what we were saying about Big Lots. This movie posits that when you are a pilot, you have way more control over your schedule versus which may, listen a which flight may be true to us I'm sure that is probably true I think you work true, for an airline I, have, think work, I think you work I don't think that anyone I don't, is, I don't think I, that you, you know what I pick. think I'll tell you what I think this is what I think and I think it is just craven movie nonsense I think they were like well it's not enough We've already shown that she doesn't want to be a flight attendant who works out of Cleveland. And it's not enough that she goes back to Cleveland to choose the guy because that's giving up on her dreams. So the movie has to end with an elevated dream come true for her professionally. So the only thing that's available is she becomes a pilot. It might as well have been in the future. She's the drummer for Motley Crue. It doesn't make any difference. And just so you know, too. A pilot has to bid for his or her schedule using a custom, uh, like a, a company system. So it's there's not like they're they're just saying, well, I hope I'd like to get this day off or that day Do off. Do you think that this movie is like, hey, America, get back in the sky? Well, we I know, mean, we this... know sh- shit's been crazy the last few years since September 11th. You know what? They were here's a movie that I feel good about get back, getting back in the sky again. <laughs> All right. So here's what I'm looking at. <laughs> F- uh, flight attendants and pilots essentially pick their schedules the same exact way. You know, so there is no there's no freedom that she's getting by being a pilot more than she's just I agree a pilot? it makes it, it make it, it answer it in it introduces new problems rather than answering any questions it is, yeah because it's it's creating a nightmare because she just wants to yeah. be or, uh, unless she could work anywhere I don't know I do <clears throat> not know I I, I think I'd like to stay on with the two of you as long as possible for us to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, while we think about it a little bit more, let's just take a look and, and and go a deep dive into 
some second opinions. The movie was a piece of shit. Yet this person recommends it. Tell me what is the message? Maybe that art is subjective. I need a second opinion. All right, these are uh, second opinions that are culled from Amazon. Uh, these are five-star reviews. Now, this movie is um, pretty well-reviewed here. Uh, it has an average of 4.6 out of five stars. Um, it has a 1,389 total reviews. Like I said, 78% are five stars. And I want to read you some of these. They all are pretty wonderful. Amanda Diane Standish writes, Great movie. It was so true to life. It was astounding. Five stars. And now we're getting into this zone. School mom writes, very cute, surprisingly accurate. If you do the research, you will find that this movie does the exact same training that stewardesses do online. Just ask your YouTube stewardess. So yes, there are required bikini scenes and she moves up from the tiny town in the trailer park where she was a child in her small town to discover who she can be as an adult. Charming and engaging characters I watched together with my daughters who are possibly interested in becoming an airline attendant. A few well-known actors and actresses. Not bad. It's, it's a mix of a lot of different things. And then School Mom goes on to say, she finishes the review, but then comes back and edits and says... You don't think about the stewardesses as much more than a glorified waitress, but she is actually responsible for your life in an emergency (laughs) and must be somewhat athletic, intelligent, and super patient with the passengers. Five stars. And then Christine K. Mitchell writes, I love this movie because it gives me a good idea about becoming a flight attendant. I chose this movie because I wanted to know what a flight attendant has to go through. I'm Mm. really looking forward to becoming a flight attendant one day. Mm. Five stars. Oh, I'd like to hear a a (laughs) follow-up. And then this is my favorite one here from Shirley. This movie makes me laugh. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I'm born in Cleveland. Five stars. Definitely. So this is it's... Cleveland based humor. <laughs> like this is good for I do people. Think if you're from Cleveland, it. you'll yeah. like it more. Oh my gosh. So people like this oh movie. Uh I mean, you know, I feel like this is a movie built for cable in the sense that if whenever you tune into it, it's a different movie. Like, so if you get mm-hmm. up to go to the bathroom and you come back, you're like, oh, what's this movie on now? It's as if it's a montage of a lot of different movies. I think it's a built for TV movie. If yeah, I was gonna say it feels to me like like a movie that that kind of just doesn't get made anymore, where they like force a bunch of people to make a movie against their will, um, <laughs> who are somehow uh, tied to or tethered to a studio, um, you know. And yet they did seem to be having a lot of fun in those bloopers. Now, what uh, something happened in those bloopers, which. It really upset me, which was Mike Myers scolding Gwyneth Paltrow for laughing. Yeah. And I just... It gave me a little... Didn't... Yeah, it made me feel bad. It made me very so uncomfortable. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. It made me very <laughs> uncomfortable. Actually, let's play that clip. That is bull ass. Do you want to know what's bull ass? Action! <laughs> you can't keep laughing at that. That's evil. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. The bloopers are 90% Mike Myers, just do just riffing and doing bits. And frankly, to w- watch it, I was like, this is too much. I, this I this must have been annoying. I know. And I'm also like, there's this sense from the bloopers, like the filmmakers are like, we know what you loved about the movie and we know what you didn't get enough of. <laughs> And then they added a dancing. This is for you. This is for you guys. And this is like a something about Mary special. Like something about Mary started this idea of like, we'll have the whole cast dance at the end. It's going to be in Greece, I guess, you know, to a certain degree. But Greece is a musical, at least. It, it also felt to me like Mike Myers, as we said earlier, was in a different movie. And frankly, and I, and I, it, frankly, I think that would have been a more, in, a more Romy and Michelle's style yes. movie. And as a result, because he's the only person executing that tone, it just feels wildly out of place and now 
in 2023, like deeply inappropriate. Well, also, Josh Molina did say once Mike Myers came aboard the film, <laughs> it amped up the tone in a way oh, that I'm was sure. unexpected because I think he had to answer to playing a gay character and Molina, you know, Molina. Uh, Molina yes, Josh Molina, yes. And uh, and he said, well, you know, once once Mike Myers came in, it really it kind of put the balance of the film uh, off kilter a bit. Yeah. Uh, so I, I buy no, that. No, it, uh, it's too much. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, just, so you, just so you guys know, they did cut out cameos by Robert Stack and Regis Philbin. Uh, oh, that's which funny. I don't know why they were not in there. The cameo by George Kennedy was a, a tip of the hat to the film Airport. Yeah. And, um, you did know... Did you and, notice that when she's on a date with Ruffalo... He says to her, apropos of nothing, don't run with scissors, which is the name of another Gwyneth Paltrow movie. Oh, interesting. Is he also in that? Di- weird, there's just weird moments. And Paul, I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of with you now that there's, you know, there the cheese pizza stuff. And, and then there's that moment also where he finds her in Cleveland and... He's like, can I take this chair? And she says, sure, yeah. not looking up. And then he, he goes to pull it. The one oh, she's on. underneath her. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> it was so strange. Yeah, because that, that seemed like something like. Well, they it yeah. felt like they thought. OK, so that's a great example. June, thank you. The chair is a great example of things I believe the movie believes are jokes. And they are not. Well, that oh, really, uh, I thought the movie was like, this is to me, I got the sense that this is a movie written by someone who has like never dated, dated and was like, this is a cute way to interact with someone. Yeah. Like, yeah. This is a, I know what, you, like, I know what you're saying. Like fun, sexy I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like, I felt like the cute. movie, I feel like stuff like th- I felt like there was a bunch of stuff that to me feels like it was there was a pass on the draft, maybe kind of what you're saying, Paul, that is related to Romy and Michelle's or um, uh, something about Mary or where they were like, let's do a pass and just put some goofs in. Yes. Let's put a goofs in Mm. to a script that maybe previously was much more about a, you know, trailer park child, unwanted, miserable childhood turns into exploring the world, reaching your destiny, maybe something that wasn't as broad and that there was a past that put in broad jokes, hired Mike Myers and the movie just it becomes like a jumble of tones and 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 and, and weird plot digressions. Yes. Uh, you know, and, and I'll say this much. Um what could have been Gwyneth Paltrow also in a movie called Sliding Doors. And because, <laughs> um, because this movie took so long to make, she missed out on being in How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. She couldn't make it. So she had to drop out at the last second and then Kate Hudson replaced her. So that's a sliding door scenario. Interesting. I will say that the other thing about this guy, the director of this, Bruno Barreto, Portuguese uh, director, one of the biggest uh, film directors of uh, in Brazil, uh, has really only made dramas. And so... Uh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And so we made these movies like Four Days in September or uh, Bossa Nova, uh, you know, uh, Tati. He made uh, a, a cop movie with Billy Baldwin before this. They, not really the guy yeah. that's going to be delivering uh, the uh, comedy. That makes sense. Then I that, that makes sense that it's not as somebody who has a light touch or... Com- that makes sense as to why the movie mm-hmm. feels so like with without stakes and aimless and kind of... Not fun for what is obviously a movie that's supposed to be about people having fun, you know, uh, you know, more and, often uh, than not. And he was uh, married to Amy Irving for quite some time. Um, and here's what I'll tell you. Here's a uh, I think we've would we recommend this movie. I mean, June, I know you came in hot. I know. And it's like y- y- you guys, you know, I-, I hate doing this podcast sometimes <laughs> because I just sometimes I just want to sit and watch a movie, you know, without all this discussion around it because it did this movie washed over me rather nicely. And I did genuinely enjoy seeing a lot of these people on screen together. I just did. I enjoyed seeing Christina Applegate. I enjoyed seeing yeah, the two of them in a, in a, in a flight attendant dorm room together in their PJs. Love it. I was like, 
I, thank you on a on a Wednesday afternoon. It was, but I would still especially in rather, the context of this. Yeah, of course, of course. But in the context of this podcast and what I am subjected to. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, for me, this was a breath of fresh. I this was I agree a with, welcome yeah. relief. I agree with you in the sense that, like, it is. It's very good performers trying their best in something that doesn't live up to the amount of quality they are putting into it. Right. So it makes it a much easier thing to watch than some of the other movies that we are forced to watch, which truly are like either a mess or don't add up or are really frustrating. This wasn't frustrating. I just felt kind of weird, kind of bored. Honestly, I just felt like it was flat. And there were times that I re- I was enjoying moments or performances or whatever, but I was it just felt boring at, at a lot of t- in a lot of I just didn't I don't know. It felt like walking into a house and every door led to a room that you did like it just I was always a little bit off. Wait, on- where do the doors go? The doors go to the cheese pizza place. <laughs> and now hear me out. Uh, but here's no, what I'll say. All the movies we're referencing as as like Romy and Michelle's something about Mary. Mm-hmm. Watch all of those movies instead of this movie. You know what I mean? Like there's <laughs> so movie many movies that are. Cast, yeah, I know. It, it just needed a comedy director. And I feel like somebody must have dropped out and they assigned it yeah. to this guy, Bruno Beretti. And the taglines for these movies are uh, don't stop till you reach the top. A comedy that goes for first class and prepare for her arrival. Uh, I will say that in the research of looking up stuff about this movie, Roger Ebert liked this movie, gave it three stars, said this is a beautiful journey. And and he thinks that uh, just like Top Gun brought young men to the Air Force, oh this movie would, be, uh, would bring young children to oh. flight attendants. And I will and say we, this. We've seen that that has been proven true. <laughs> now, I will also say that this is a great movie that ends on the same song, begins and ends on the same song. And uh, mm-hmm. and oh, and yeah. it's throughout. Actually, I'm so sorry, Paul. It doesn't just begin and end. You're talking about True Colors. Oh, not True Colors. Isn't it? Oh. Uh, wait, oh, is sorry. it True because True Colors is woven into the movie multiple times in both vocal and instrumental versions. Oh, That's wow. That's very true. But, but you, I'm sorry, you're talking about a different song. Go ahead. I'm so no, sorry. No, I was just saying just the uh, Don't Stop Believing. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Because that really is the theme of the movie. Don't Stop Believing. Because one day you'll get to something that you didn't even believe in because yeah. it's actually it, it's more convenient. <laughs> I guess. Or it's like beyond your wildest dreams. Like, I think that's maybe it's like beyond your. I I don't know. I do not know. And also there's a world in which, like, I guess maybe she's not with Mark Ruffalo at the very end when she's a pilot, because that's what's really confounding. No, she is. Like, that would be incredible. Well, but but <laughs> if she's if like she making is, out with Rob they, Lowe. <laughs> but they set it up like it's a choice, no, but it's not. Well, I feel like what they're saying is it's not enough to just choose Ruffalo. She also has to choose herself as well, which must mean she has to become a pilot. It's not enough to go to Cleveland, be a flight attendant and marry Ruffalo. That's that's not um, believing in your dreams. That's somehow making a step backwards or something. So she must have had another great uh, destiny, another great ambition, which is she becomes a pilot. So it weirdly is at the end Mm -hmm. of the movie, a fuck you to flight attendants. Right. Because she doesn't go. Like she doesn't you go fucking on to be, idiots. You should if like, you're just out of become Cleveland, pilots. If become you're out of pilot. Cleveland, it's not worth it. So become a pilot. <laughs> like I, the I, only I think... good the only good flight attendant gig is one. There's only one good flight attendant gig. The rest is all trash. Yeah, international first class. Everybody else Which is like garbage. It seems like that's true. I mean, oh. I do think this. Well, I think this is an incredibly difficult job. I think it's a difficult now job. More than now, ever. now this now more this than is an ever. impossible job. I think this job. is an incredibly difficult job. Shout out to all of the flight attendants out there who oh, yeah. who are doing it because my God. My God. And the, yeah, and especially these last these last three and a half years have just Kidding been me? a disaster for that industry. Yeah. I mean, uh, we are just boarding planes full of monsters. Um, does any... Oh, Truly. it's, it's ridiculous. It's so Truly. upsetting. Upsetting. Yes. Um, does anyone want to say anything about uh, Christina Applegate uh, pounding... Incredible. Paltrow's face into bread? Incredible. I feel like I I've spoken it. about it multiple times. Yes, yeah, it's fa- it is, but it deserves repeating. Just for amazing. everybody, there is a there is a fight scene 
again, this is post September 11th, but Christina Applegate having been fired by the airline is somehow able to walk on to uh, uh, Gwyneth fired Paltrow's- Fired the airline by steal, for stealing, for stealing tchotchkes, <laughs> like little, like- And little, little, bo- little bottles of booze. Well, listen. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but she's able to walk back and have a fist fight with Gwyneth Paltrow in first class uh, on one of the planes. And the fight is so funny. And they do. She smashes Gwyneth Paltrow's face into like a loaf of sourdough bread. For that moment alone, a it loaf, is worth it. A loaf as if it just came out of the oven. Ugh. A giant, full, <laughs> lo- round loaf. Um, man, I would have liked some of these people to come back. You know, I wanted to know some of these stories. I was interested in well, some of these players. And this instead is what they I wanted kept... to tell you yeah, both. Go ahead. The reason why I picked this movie is because I am developing this into a limited series. We got the <laughs> entire cast back. 20 years later, we're going to bring it back. We're going to go back to the top one more time, guys. We're... Rob Lowe is on. <sighs> Everybody is signed back on. <laughs> that would be that would be kind of amazing. <laughs> uh, it would be great. It's this on is stars. the kind of movie. This is the kind of movie. Instead of making legacy sequels or uh, to like beloved movies, yeah. I'd love it if you took a movie that was genuinely unsuccessful. I think everybody and you saying that uh, Gwyneth Paltrow said this was a bad movie. Yeah. Genuinely taking an unsuccessful movie and turning it into something. Let's take incredible, another shot. That, I would mean, be I've always, that would be I've awesome. I always believe that that's the secret to remix. Um, I just want to call it one thing, which is uh, Richard Ayoade wrote a book called Ayoade on Top. It is a full book only on this movie. It takes, it breaks down this movie. It is <laughs> like, it's 300 it? pages. Babe, this is the book that I was reading <laughs> and laughing out loud. Remember, you were like, what are you reading? And I'm like, I'm reading this book oh, about a Gwyneth right. Paltrow movie. I would read her chapters or ch- oh, that- sections. Right? It is one of the funniest what? books I've ever read. Oh, it is, I'm going to get this. That get, sounds amazing. It, and it has an audio component, too. You could listen to the audio. It is Done. so fucking funny. And it's, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't see this movie before reading that book. And it's... And I didn't even watch a movie after reading the book. I didn't need to. It's so good. It is It is so funny. So That's I just want to fun. plug that as one of my favorite things I've read in recent uh, memory. Uh, it was one of the reasons I wanted to do this. I wanted to watch what like what could inspire a 300-page book. Yeah. It literally well, breaks it down interesting. scene by scene. I and get not- it because there, it, I get it because of kind of what we've been talking about, which is when you watch this, you are like, why isn't this working? Like yeah. you, you really are. are in it's place. very frustrating because it really should work. These are good actors giving who have chemistry with each other, giving good, uh, ostensibly good performances in service of I don't know what you know. I mean, he he treats this like it is, uh, <laughs> like like it is. Um, <laughs> Peck and paw to Paris by way of Nevada and other places we don't care about. Wow. <laughs> what do we got to talk about here? June, I know you have a big event coming up. Yes. On May 13th, the Deep Dive and Bitch Sesh are coming together to host I'd Hit That, which is uh, our big extravaganza pick pickleball tournament slash show slash dance party slash everything. And Paul is going to be our, our DJ and MC. Amazing. It's going to be Love so it. much fun if you head to janeclub.com slash pickleball and use code H-D-T-G-M. That's code H-D-T-G-M at checkout. You can get 15% off of tickets and they are going fast. Nice. <laughs> I love it. I love um, it. Uh, I can't wait. That's amazing. I You guys have introduced me to pickleball and it's pretty, you're quite good, pretty Jason. intense. Yeah, you were very good. You. Um, I, you know, I'd like to get better. I'd like to get better. Um, I'll throw out a plug for the animated show Housebroken that I do. Um, one of the voices of a show about people's pets when the people aren't around, uh, and the mischief they get into. It is on Fox, uh, Sunday nights. It's on Fox Sunday night. Season two is uh, going right now. Please uh, tune in. And also, uh, on Paramount Plus, uh, Star Trek Prodigy, one of the best uh, animated Star Trek shows, as well as Lower Decks um, that you both have been on. Uh, fantastic. But Star Trek Prodigy, it needs your eyeballs. So watch the whole show on Paramount Plus, please. Completion rate, people. Completion 
rate is the secret of success here. Uh, all oh, right, everybody. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just because this movie had like light rom-com vibes, I would like to just put a call out to everybody to please watch the British rom-com Rye Lane that's on mm. Hulu. I'm not uh, associated with this at all. This is a plug for something I watched and loved. Uh, it is absolutely fantastic. A deeply funny and compelling and lovely and sweet, like straight up rom-com. It's funny. I'm, I was completely on board for the love story. The performances are great. Rye Lane. I love it. I'll say this, that if you want to see Jason and I in uh, Los Angeles, a lot of times you can catch us at Largo doing our improv show, Dinosaur, which uh, is a monthly show, and it's always a great cast of uh, fun people. The show may be over, but it continues next week on Last Looks. That's right. We want you to join us on Last Looks to tell us all the things that we might have messed up, that we might have gotten wrong, and you get a chance to prove that you are better than us. You can do that very simply by going to our Discord at discord.gg slash hdtgm, or you can call me at 619-PAUL-ASK. I also run a very impromptu uh, advice line. So if you have any problems, I am there to solve them. Normally, I'm joined by Jason on Last Looks, so tune into Last looks to hear interviews with some of our great past guests, some deleted scenes, and so much more, including what we're watching next week. You know what? If you're a big How Did This Get Made fan, that means you must have some merch. And if you need our merch, go to tpublic.com slash stores slash hdtgm. That's T-E-E public.com. You can find us online everywhere and any kind of social platform at HDTGM. And if you really just want to go old school, check out our website at HDTGM.com that has links to everything you could possibly imagine. But this show, what you're listening to right here, couldn't be done without a couple of things. First of all, you listening, but more importantly, I'm talking about the amazing producerial work of Scott Sani, Molly Reynolds, and our movie picking producer, Avril Halley, our engineer, Alex Gonzalez, and our publisher, July Diaz. People, they make the trains run and we love them. So we will see you next week for Last Looks. And until then, bye for now. Now you get out of here. Get out of here. Oh, and Donna.